morning, Andrew. Good morning. Good How are morning. you? Doing well. Doing good, everybody. Stop here in just a second. Welcome, everybody. All right. All right. Good. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on where you are. We should have a few more people coming in uh, over the next little bit. All right. Before I dive in, um, over this week and then some of the end of last week, we talked about a number of different topics. Talked a little bit about um, social media. We've talked about. Um, gosh, we, we've gone over some, what did we talk about yesterday, guys? Oh, we talked about, um, developing out a plan and, and your personal development plan, right? Learning how to prioritize that kind of stuff. Um, mindset so, as well. what's that? Mindset, mindset as well. Mindset. Yeah. Uh, the mindset involved with that. So before I dive in, does anybody have any immediate questions, anything they need to know, want to touch on? go over anything before we uh, we dive in. I'm going to be talking about time management today. It'll be interesting to see. We had a couple of people that were really, really wanting to learn a more, little bit more about time management. Let's see if they scheduled them at the proper time to actually be here and learn about it since that was what we had talked about. All right. Uh, any questions before I kick off? Yes? No? All right. A little bit of housekeeping as I do it. Some of you guys that are joining for the first time or one of the first times, these calls Monday through Friday at noon Eastern time, uh, every day right here, same Zoom link, same bat time, same bat channel. Feel free to join us all of the time. You're welcome. We go over a number of different topics. We talk about mindset, success training, becoming an entrepreneur, uh, dealing with the ups and downs and what that all looks like. Uh, at times I'll get into uh, different topics when it comes to um you know, marketing and building out your brand and things along those lines. Tomorrow, I am going to be spending some time talking about LinkedIn. We're going to do a general introduction. I will show you some things. I'm not going to go super in depth um, on all of it, kind of depending on how tomorrow goes um, and where we end up. I may do a little bit more. The reality about LinkedIn and really any platform, guys, the funnel that Blake has built out works exceptionally well with just about every niche you get into. Not every platform works as well for that niche, unless you go super detailed and super specific and you're willing to put in the extra work. And if you are great, then yeah, you can get results and you can get results on any platform, but some will do better on certain platforms than others, right? Like, you know, a, a personal trainer may not be as active on LinkedIn as they are on Instagram, for example, right? So part of it depends on, on the understanding you have with your niche. With that said, just about everybody, um, so many overwhelmed because of the resources. Oh, because the questions that I asked you on the on the homework. And hopefully you guys take advantage. I give you some questions. Typically, I give you a little bit of homework. The more that you do this, the better off you'll be in general uh, and with your business. I try and give you guys the, uh, the reality of what it is to be an entrepreneur, and I try and give you the tools that you'll need to be able to do this long term. I get a lot of time the, the following questions. What's the best niche? What's the most profitable niche? How do I get going as soon as possible? What's the quickest way to make money? How can I make a change now? And all of those are valid questions, but there's so many different variables with all of those. And if that's kind of where our mind is, then a lot of times our priorities are a little skewed. Today, talking about time management, here's how many of you guys have heard phrases like time is money? Time is money. Okay, what are some other phrases along those lines when we look at time management, when we get stressed about time? What are some things we hear about all of all of the time? Anybody have anything? We have so much. What's that, Bill? You only have so much. You only have so much. Absolutely. I was just reading about this in The Big Leap. Um, well, actually, I finished the book last night, and he talks a lot about Einstein time. Einstein time? Einstein you, time. 
<laughs> all right. We'll have to spend a little time talking about that when I, I'll dive into the big leap this next week. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times I used to, I'm, yeah, we all have 24 hours. So you, a lot of you guys know, I used to do cleaning and restoration. <clears throat> when I started, I was working with my ex-father-in-law. Most of the work that we did was commercial work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a lot of our customers were churches actually. And we would start work. We would go to an area. We'd work Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday. Um, and we would go to different areas and we'd be cleaning different buildings. And we would do them during the week because for the most part, those buildings were mostly empty during the week. And we would go in and we'd be cleaning these buildings that were anywhere between five and 30,000 square feet. And there was this thing he always used to say, he's like, the, the wand is what makes us money. The wand makes money. If the wand's not moving, we're not making money. Right? So think about the work that you do. Think about the job that you're in and, and whatever your wand is, if the wand's not moving, you're not making money. And so we would be working in two man teams and we're moving around and you're moving the wand cleaning like this, right? Pull back the, the water is on and it, it's vacuuming and then you go back over it and you're trying to extract as much of that water and you're going back and forth and back and forth and moving around and then you get into rooms and you've got chairs that are stacked in a corner and you got to get in that corner and you got to move them around and the one guy is jumping around and moving the hose and moving the chairs so that the other person that's moving the wand can keep the wand moving man if that wand's not moving we're not making money right you eat you eat fast because you you know if we're eating and we're stopped that means we're not making money right? So think about the jobs that you had and, and what you're doing. You're on the clock. How many times have you thought, this is what I make per hour? This is what I'm worth per hour. Enough. If you say that enough, how much you make per hour, you start to evaluate that time and money. And when you think, the more that you, you kind of use that phrase, well, look, time is money. Time is money. You start to associate that in every aspect of your life now some of you guys and and for a lot of you especially the ones that, that are here frequently i appreciate it and, and i understand that you get this some of you guys are here for the first time or second time or third time are going this is a waste of my time <laughs> time is money i should be doing xyz i could be making money already why am i spending my time why am i wasting my time on something like this on the personal development the more that you start thinking like that, the more it's going to kind of pervade into other aspects of your life and your relationship with time is going to be off. It's going to be skewed. If you guys remember, the, there was a something I said at the end of the call yesterday, asked how many of you guys are grateful for life and talking about if you are grateful for life and you're grateful for the things that you have, then what you should be doing is giving reverence to the time that you have in your life. Right? You guys remember that? When we talk about time management and we talk about being more productive and we talk about getting more done, there's elements there. But before we get to it, I want to look at a couple of ways that we misunderstand time. So first is the productivity, right? The, a, a lot of the confusion comes from the fact this first sentence that I've got here, look, it's not just that you want to be more productive. What you really want is more time in your life. And if you're more productive, with the time that you spend working, it means you get more time to do the things that you ultimately should be placing more value with, time with your family, personal time, time to travel, time to do other things. It's not that you need to be more, or want to be more productive. You just want more time. But we don't value the time that we spend in different things. So we don't have more time to do the things that we want. What happens a lot of times is we become more efficient with the work that we do. And instead of using that time to spend with our family and sit with our kids or talk with our loved ones, we just pile up more work. Well, I'm, I'm getting more done in the same amount of time. That's fine. But I mean, is there anybody here that started a business like this and one of their primary goals was not more personal time or time with their family? I mean, some of you guys may have gone through Lisa's like, I don't want more time with my family. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> is that what it is? Lisa? Lisa's like 2020 the kids were home too much. I'm, I'm good on time for a little while. I'm, I'm looking. Actually, my family lives in Canada and um, 
I'm kind of. We're, <laughs> oh, you, oh, you, we're not. Okay. Well, we're not maybe, really on maybe, speaking okay. terms. <laughs> so, so maybe it's personal time. The point of it is, is you're it's looking great, for value, actually. right? We're looking for value and what what we place value on. So one of the ways that we misunderstand time is productivity first. Another way we misunderstand time is the investing in learning. So what I was just talking about, look, the upfront costs of learning, the upfront costs are cash and time and effort. And when you spend time on something like this, there is no guaranteed return, it's uncertain. So we skim the surface. We show up, but we don't pay attention. We go through it maybe a little too quickly but it doesn't help you in the long run. It doesn't teach you what you need to know. It doesn't help you make better decisions. Ultimately, it's wasting time. V, can you do me a favor? Keep an eye on the, the waiting room, make sure people get popped in. Does this make sense, guys? Some of you guys, the way that you approach learning, as important as learning is, some of you guys approach it in a way that really is a waste of your time, and it's because you don't value yourselves enough and that's when it becomes a true waste of time. All right. Yes, I'll be able to get you these slides. There's a lot of stuff here. All right. So a few quotes for you. Shane Parrish said, we all know our money isn't infinite. Everybody knows that. Yet you, you treat your time and energy as if they were. You get to decide where your time goes. You can either spend it moving forward or you can spend it putting out fires, you decide. And if you don't decide, others will decide for you. Next, time equals life, not time equals money. Time equals life. Waste your time, waste your life, or master your time and master your life. Your philosophy when it comes to time. I think time management is such an interesting thing because ultimately this idea of time, we all have the same amount of time. We all have the same 24 hours. Life is all about, and, and the understanding the value of time is very much philosophical. It's not black and white. And yet everything we have when it comes to time management is about what? Lists and black and white and exact plans. And sometimes, guys, you will get more out of your time management if you simply learn to value time and where you put it in and the effort that you put in and why you're putting it in than anything else. So let's get real for a second about time. And I will give you some productivity tips at the end of this. We will give you some things that you can do to increase your productivity, to manage your time better. I absolutely will deliver those. I'm gonna give you some questions that you can answer. You will have some homework. All of this, all of the self-development work that we do guys is all about your self-awareness. So people, there are hundreds and hundreds of places that you can go to learn about time management. I'm gonna give you some key elements. Ultimately, it's up to you. But if you don't understand yourself, you don't understand where you're wasting time, you don't understand how you value time, none of it will mean anything. On the flip side, if you do get real and raw with yourself, if you do start to understand these things, if you do know where you value time or why you're not valuing time, if you, if you get that little epiphany and then you can start at applying these things in the proper manner, there's a sense of fulfillment that comes in, even if you don't increase exponentially your level of, of productivity. All right. So I know we got people from all over the world here. So you may need to kind of figure some of this out on your own, but here we go. One of the ways that we misunderstand time is relationships. Okay, here we go. Men in the U.S., and this goes for North America for the most part. The average life expectancy, 76.1 years. Average woman is 81.1 years. Okay, does everyone have that? If you are a man, I want you to write that down. If you're a woman, I want you to write that down. It may be a little bit different depending on where you are. Um, and the reality is, guys, and I'm just going off of statistics, so don't, don't blame the messenger. The reality is, is if you are Afri African-American, it's, it's a year or two less. Uh, if you are Asian, it's a year or two more, um, you know, Caucasian and, and Latin, it's, it's, you know, all of it is close to it. So we're, we're going to use these as, as kind of benchmarks. Okay. Everybody cool with that? We can do that. Now, 
with that said, because I know we occasionally we have some people that are a little bit older. If you were already at the age of 65 and you're looking at that and you're going, holy shit, I've only got 11 years. If you're a guy, it, it's different. It, if you're already at the age of 65 as a man, then you're going to add, it's actually 18 years. So you're, if you've already hit 65, then your life expectancy is actually over 83. If you've hit 65 and you're a woman, then your average life expense expectancy is over 85. Okay. So you, you would add more to it, but I want everyone to kind of write down what their life expectancy is. I want you to why, subtract it. Why Andrew, why add 18? If you're at 65 already, mm -hmm. so men that are 65 have an average life expectancy that's actually higher. That's actually about 83. If you've already hit 65, you have about 18 more years because they're averaging out all of civilization, right? You know, all the whole population. And so when you average out the whole population then you end up with people that are, you know, 40 and 30 and 20 dying. And so it lowers the average amount. Does Thank that you. make sense? Everybody, yeah. are we clear on that? Yeah, where we're at. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to come up with that number between where you are and, and where you're, you know, the average life expectancy. And let's just look at it. Because a lot of times we put off, you know, I'm, I'm going this year um, here in, I guess, a month and a half. My mom is turning 70. And my brother and my sisters and I, we haven't gotten together for my mom's birthday in a long time. <clears throat> in a long time. I moved out here to Florida. My sister's been living in Vegas. You know, the, the four of us haven't gotten together like that in years. I, she's the four of us together in maybe 15, maybe even longer in a long time. And, and that happens a lot. And it's not just birthdays. So I want you to think about Christmas or, or holidays. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I want you to think about some of these things. And, and it's not just how many weeks do you have until the end of your life? I want you to think, you know, in, instead of, saying, I'm going to put it off till next year, or I'm going to wait to call them. Look at how much time you have. Now, there's a lot of time between here and there. I'm not trying to do this to get you scared, but I want you to recognize time is a valuable asset. It, time isn't money. Time is the most important thing that you have. We've all got the 24 hours in a day. How you spend it is ultimately it's up to you. Put some value on it. Put some reverence with time. Because now during the day, I'm not going to waste it do, during doing certain things. I'm going to get rid of some of those apps that are wasting my time. You know, I'm going to not spend time with people that bring me down. Because I just don't have, forget about not having the time during the day. I don't have enough time in my life to deal with the bullshit that some people want to bring to my life. I'm sorry. But things like, you know, and, and this is with the whole time is money, you know, because I, I remember talking with people and say, well, my time is worth X or I make this. And if that's how you're living life, I'm, you're missing out on so much because you're worth so much more than 20 an hour or 200 an hour, right? And a lot of you guys are equating that to your business and you're going, well, I'm working this much so I expect to make X amount. No, like I'm working this so that I can leverage the internet and everything else and all of these systems and, and take it that much further because my time is worth infinitely more than that. Look, I spend time doing these. You guys spend time here. You're investing in yourself to go long-term. Understand the value of time, okay? Now, along with that, we're talking about reverence of time. We're talking about reverence of life. Pay attention to a handful of real simple things, guys, right? Instead of saying, I'll get there soon, we can do it again next year or anything else. Look, we've talked about health before, sleep, food, enzymes, how you take care of yourself, exercise, all of that. Look, top 10, this is US. It plays out really similar around the world, but heart disease, cancer, unintentional injuries, uh, respiratory stroke, a lot of these things you can take care of if you simply live your life better. And it may not completely negate some of them, but it'll give you more time. And that's the bottom line, right? It'll give you more time couple of couple of more quotes here. Yesterday, I talked about making a development plan. Part of that is developing out a plan for yourself to Andrew, work on personal development. Can I'll you please you go to previous slide for 30 seconds? 30 seconds. I'm going to get you all of these slides later oh, on. So thank you. And you can and all of you guys, if you're not in the US, look some of these up, figure out 
you know, learn a little bit about yourself. Hey, I wonder what the average life expectancy is in Malaysia, in Canada, in wherever, right? Look this stuff up, figure out where you're at. Brian Tracy says, with excellent time management, you get more living out of life, more time for the people and things you enjoy. Okay, a man who dares to waste an hour of time has not discovered the value of his life. The Roman philosopher Seneca said it well in a letter. It is not that we have a short space of time, but that we waste much of it. Lack of direction, not lack of time is the problem. We all have 24 hour days. That's from Zig Ziglar, one of my favorite guys. Absolutely fantastic. So here we go. A couple of things to do. And I'll get you these slides, guys. So first thing is run the day or it will run you. These two pictures, you guys have heard me talk about it. I, you know, I woke up one time sitting in with the therapist. And he said, you know, it looks like you kind of woke up in your life and you realized you were scrubbing the deck and someone else was at the helm. Someone else was guiding the ship. Quit doing that. Understand in your life, in your day, some will be masters and some will serve. How you live your life, how you spend your time is either going to be dictated by you or dictated by other people. You get to decide. If you do not plan out your time, typically in blocks, the high, most highly effective people, the most successful people, almost all of them talk about planning out their time in blocks. Specific tasks, types of tasks in those blocks. And planning out your breaks. Breaks do are not wasting time. Occasionally having a personal day, time to work out, time for meditation, time to rest, time for silence. That's not wasting time. That's taking care of yourself physically and emotionally. But if you don't plan your breaks, a lot of times you'll work right through them, which leads to lower productivity, higher stress, frustration because, oh my gosh, I forgot my break. Oh man, I had to work so hard. I, I wasn't even able to take a break. That's nonsense. If you do that, you're not working at your highest level of productivity. Run your day or it'll run you. So if you need to plan your day out the night before, if you need to plan it in the morning, if you're planning your week on Sunday, whatever it is, you got to find what works best. There's a lot of different things that a lot of different people say. I'm giving you general ideas. You guys have to come up with what works best for you, which means you have to try some of it. Next, think on paper, plan it out. Just planning your day in your head isn't going to be enough. Next, when you have some of those tasks or you're doing things during the day, you know, Brian Tracy calls it the salami slice method. People talk about, you know, what's it take to eat an elephant, whatever it is, break it into manageable pieces. And some of you guys are frustrated about certain tasks with the funnel or building your business or content, or I don't want to do a video, or I don't want to write a blog post, or I'm scared to write an email. Just start writing something, write a headline. And then create the, the creative side of it. Create an image, work on the caption, just do something. Okay, manageable pieces. Now, I don't know if it goes better here with one of the other slides. One rule of thumb, when you're initially creating content or you're working on your journal or you're planning things out, stay off the delete button. And what I mean is don't worry about your initial draft trying to be perfect. If you've got a, a block of time that's set aside for creative, set aside for content, just do it. Push out as much as you can. Create as much content as you're able to so that at the end, you can go back and review and modify. Right? Does that make sense to everybody following along? Next, concentrate on where you are. Focus. So I'm going to show up for my job fully prepared. If I'm going to an office, I'm prepared to do what I need to do. If I'm sitting down, I'm going to work on my content. I've done what I need to do. I've got my water here. I've got a snack so I don't have to get up. You know, I've got the door closed. I'm not going to be interrupted. I'm focused. I used to hate when I was doing clean and restoration and you show up for a job and it's like, oh, damn, we forgot this. And you'd have to leave and go to Home Depot. And then you get back, you're like, oh, crap, we forgot that. And you leave and you go to AutoZone. And, oh, man, I forgot this. And now all of a sudden we're three hours into what should have been a work day and we haven't gotten anything done. Now, whether you're a contractor or not, honestly, how many of you guys have had that experience where you show up for work and you forgot what you were supposed to have in order to get the job done? And you get up and you get up. And you get up and you're wondering why nothing happens at the end of the day. Plan it out. Next, quit trying to multitask. You're just not good at it. 
Stop it. <laughs> None of you are. The only time you should be multitasking is if you've got something that you can do on where cognitively you don't have to think it through, right? One of those habits that you've just, you've got down. I'm in the shower. I'm tying my shoes. I'm walking around in the morning doing stuff. I'm walking the dogs. Now, if I want to multitask, I want to listen to a podcast or an audible book. I'm trying to do something like that. Occasion, that's that's okay. But you can't multitask the rest of the stuff. So your phone's got to be off. If I'm sitting down, I'm creating content. My phone is off. My notifications are off. I don't have my email up on my desktop. Turn off your desktop notifications in general. Guys, if you've got a computer and you still have your desktop notifications on at all, shut them off. Quit wasting time because that's all it is. Even if it's that little thing, because you'll look at it and you go, what is that? Oh, oh, I don't need to worry about that now. I'll get with it later. What did that do? That interrupted my train of thought. It's going to take me legitimately more time to get back in the groove than what I what it just took. So knock it off. Quit trying to multitask. Okay. Especially you moms. I love you. You know, I've got a great mom. Women are fantastic. You're not good multitaskers. It it slows you down in general. Hey, hey, Andrew. Yes. Hey, I, uh, careful, careful what I you say. I, I'm getting myself in hot, hot water with the women. Don't, you don't have to do it yourself. So <laughs> go ahead. I, uh, <laughs> I, I think I read a story. I think I read a, an article one time that has been proven that you can't actually multitask. The brain's not even capable of multitasking. Not, not well. No, you know, I used to, she was, I have to be careful. Who I, let me not say who it is. I saw, I saw a person I know um, who is in, one of the most intelligent people that I, I've ever met in my life and always busy and doesn't function, like gets agitated if you're not busy around them, right? Anybody know someone like that? Like, why aren't you working? Especially any of you that may be Latin, if yes. there's any Latin in, in the family, right? Like if you're sitting down and they're busy, they get mad at you. Like I got done what I needed to get. I don't know what you like, what's going on over there, but I'm, you know, so you get up and you start doing something. You don't even know what you're doing and they get mad at you because you're not doing it, whatever they want you to be doing. Right. Even though you don't know. Right. Like one of those people. Anyway, I walk in one time to room and this individual was on a treadmill at home on a treadmill with a, an ironing board across the arms of the treadmill ironing reading a medical textbook, listening to an audiobook. <laughs> and I walked in and I looked and I'm like, if that is not the epitome of who this person is, I, I don't know. Like, that's it. That's right there. But completely unproductive. Like, there's no way you're getting value out of any of those things. And then after the fact, being like, oh, now I've got to re-iron some of these. You messed them up when you put them away. No, I didn't. <laughs> like, did you see what you were doing when you're trying to iron that? Don't blame that on me. Don't do that to yourself, right? Yeah, it, it will absolutely, because here's what happens. Our brains are only able to do so much during the day. I mean, that's the reality. You, your willpower, your determination, your motivation, it is finite. And if you're wasting it on stuff like that to try and appear more productive, it's just going to kill you in the end. I mean, not literally kill you, but you understand what I'm talking about. So quit trying to multitask. All right. <laughs> Next. Learn to say no. Quit being so eager to help every single person. Every single, you know, this person at work needs help. That person needs help. Blah, blah. Like at some point, guys, you've got to take care of you. Understand and appreciate and value your time, your limits. And it's not because time is money. It's because your time is worth everything. Time is life. Okay. Now. Here's a couple of key things, and I will give you these slides, but here's a couple of key ways that you can save time. And yes, absolutely, some of these are total no-brainers. Turn off the TV, we waste a ton of time on TV, knock that off, okay? Instead, read a book, start writing your book, start writing content. And honestly, it's more than an hour a day on average. And I know some of you guys are like, I don't watch TV at all. Well, then figure out what it is. It's social media, it's YouTube, it's something else. Some There's somewhere that's just being a time vampire, okay? Next. Do your projects together. And we've talked about this. Keep yourself in flow. If you are writing content, move into, you know, stay in creativity mode. If you're doing emails, boom, boom, you know, don't check 20 times during the day to answer emails. 
It wastes time. Don't stop everything you're doing to, you know, make a call 12 times a day, set times during your day that you're going to do that. Next, don't answer the phone. Let it go to voicemail. Most of us don't, get, you know, and, and so instead of just voicemail now, I would say text, right? Set it aside. I'm not going to answer all day long, right? I've got certain times of the day that I will answer a text or a phone call. I will not answer at other times because that's not what I'm doing. And I promise that will give you some time back to your day. Next, get up a little bit earlier, maybe go to sleep a little bit later. Still make sure that you get your sleep. We'll talk about sleep some other time. Know what your body needs in order to function properly. But if you can get up a few minutes earlier, especially if you have family at home and you can get up a little bit before they do so you can get something done, even if that's part of like your miracle morning, this is going to be the time that I get up and I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to do some exercises. I, I'm going to work on my affirmations. I'm going to have some silence, right? My visualization. If that's the 15 minutes that I can do it and I can do it before everybody else is up, great. Zig Ziglar, you guys, if you haven't heard of him, you should listen to some of his audios. He's from, I want to say Kentucky. So especially if you're not from the U.S. or if you are, like his accent is hilarious. It is so deep Southern, just such a, he's just fun to listen to. And he's a funny guy and he's an amazing, was an amazing motivational speaker. But one of the things he talks about is Automobile University. If you are still driving to work, guys, you should be listening to audiobooks. There is a tremendous, look, 10 hours of audiobooks a week means 500 plus hours of that a year. You understand how much time that is? You want to become an expert in something? Start listening to audiobooks. Next, maybe spend a couple, you know, this is one of the things I pulled off of a list, the cutting a lunch short. For me, I would maybe cut it short a little bit, but use that 15 minutes for some personal just breathing time, right? I block time out for my lunch. I make sure that I do that. Number seven, hire an assistant to do things. Outsourcing, getting things done. Oh, Alabama, Denise, awesome. So outsource. Get people to do stuff. Outsource. It will save you time in the long run. It's going to be a hassle. Some of you guys are so firmly embedded in the S quadrant that it, you're, it's causing a heart attack to hear you should pay somebody else to do things like check your emails or phone calls or do little graphics or everything else because, oh my gosh, I can just do that and it's just going to take a little bit of time and I can save money if I just do it myself. Stop. If you want to be real productive, if you truly value your time, if you want to get things bigger, just an example I used on the call earlier, right? Outsource and make your pie bigger. If somebody's going to take up a piece of my pie, I'm just going to make my pie bigger, Right? Hire someone to take care of some of the little stuff. And look, if it just eliminates a little bit of stress for you, Dolce, chill. We got to wrap up soon because the pups are getting a little antsy. All right. A couple more things. All right. Uh, focus. Different people are distracted by different things. Understand what you're distracted by. Identify it and get rid of it. Get it off of your desk. Get it out of your head. Put the phone away. Lock it up. Whatever you need to do, it's going to make you more productive. Um, change up your work hours if you need to, especially a lot of you guys are still working from home. Spend the time you need to, all right? Plan because failure to plan is planning to fail. We've talked about that. If you plan better in the morning, plan in the morning. If you plan better at night, do that. Whatever you need to do. I like doing it at night because then I'm not thinking about it all night long when I'm trying to go to bed. So I'm going to give you guys these questions so you don't have to write them all down. I'm just going to run through them super quick here. How many hours per week would you gain if you did some of these things? What will enable you to accomplish? What strategies um, do you need to work on the most? You need to define these for you. If you've mastered some of them, that's great. Identify them. Identify why you mastered them and then what you need to work on. Then make a list of things you can delegate right now. How can you become more focused? What's your biggest distraction? Choose the thing this week that you're going to delegate. All of you, pick something this week. You're going to delegate it. Okay? Choose a skill to improve on. That's part of the development plan, right? Plan your development. And then here's a list of some books. 
Miracle Morning for Entrepreneurs, I did not put on here because it's already in a list of books that I've given you guys. You should have that. I would start there. The next is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, How to Stop Procrastinating, Eat That Frog. Four Hour Work Week is an awesome book, especially if you need to learn how to let stuff go. If you're struggling delegating, that's a good one. Deep Work and then 15 Secrets. There's others out there, guys. There's podcasts. There are, hundreds, there are thousands of articles. Look, if we go to Google, my computer would. We look up time management. Where's my, oh, it doesn't tell me how many different. Normally it tells you how many results. Okay, fine. It's not there. Point is, there's a lot of places you can go. There's a lot of things you can learn. Read some of them. Read some of those books. I'll send you guys the uh, the slides. We've got everybody's email, so we'll send everybody the slides. Um, you need to learn how you, like where you struggle, what you're good at, what you've mastered, and where you struggle what you need to do to value your time a little bit more. Part of that may just be valuing yourself a little more. Some of you guys just don't believe enough in yourself. You don't believe enough in your capabilities. I've worked with too many people and seen too many where a lot of people, when they walk in, others look at them and go, they're not going to succeed. They're not going to do it. And I've seen him do some amazing things over and over and over and over and over again. All of you guys are capable of doing some tremendous good in this world. Some of you will start with this and you'll build up a business that allows you to live life the way you want to. It'll help you take care of your family better. And maybe you step into where you're helping the community. You're helping others that you do some outreach. Maybe you start doing some charity work. I got today... Uh, a friend of mine who was my original mentor, the guy that started the big leap. Anyway, I found his, there's a project that he started called the fam project and it's all about families and it's geared towards helping parents connect better with their children. It's geared towards helping, you know, adults and children stay away from any type of addictive behavior. It's geared towards helping families become families again. And that's kind of been his passion. That's been his work and his drive for a long, long time. And after 20 plus years of building digital businesses and generating tens of millions of dollars, he's able to focus on that now in a way that will affect many, many people, hopefully around the country, around the world. I mean, he's built homes in, in different countries. He's built schools in different villages, all because he learned how to write marketing copy. He learned how to figure out a sales funnel. He learned how to market online. You know, I've got my pathway that I'm walking Guys, just decide on yours. Start to value your own time. Decide how big you want to get. Decide how you want to get there. And then let's push. There is power in the investment that you're putting in right now and the time you're doing right now with personal development. I've said before, it may not make a difference how much money you make by the end of February, but it will make a difference in who you become over the course of the next few years. So on that note, go out, be the best you can be, share some love, smile a bit more, be more fantastic and always rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are. Have an amazing day, guys. I will talk with you all soon. Tomorrow we'll be on. We'll be talking LinkedIn. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.